Hello, my name is Andre from the Projector Movement. I am a 5'1 cell projector projector. And in this video, I got to talk to Kathy, who is an evolutionary astrologer and a fellow cell projector projector. In this video, we got to talk about how our authority operates, the mechanics behind the self-projected authority. We got to talk about invitations, and we spoke on how sometimes we could be surprised by the words that come out of our mouths, but we still have to honor it. We also just wrote an ultimate blog for all you self-projected projectors. If you're interested in reading it, we'll link it below so you could check it out. We hope you guys enjoy it. What brought you here? Um, well, to talk about self, being a self projector projector. Uh, I'm a 5 1 self projector projector, and I am the creative director, general manager for the projector movement. So I'm excited to get into talking about the way we're designed and how our mechanics work. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I really love the projector movement because obviously spreading the word for projectors, um, it's a very, very important, um, yeah, I guess, piece of human design that more and more projectors step into also their voice, right? That's why we as self-projected projectors, I see us as spokespersons or spokespeople for being projectors. And so I would love to know your experience as a self-projected projector because I feel like it's a rarer authority if I Total, can say so. totally yeah yeah it's 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 definitely more on the rare side because the emotional projector emotional yeah emotional authority have more of the projector population mm -hmm. uh so it's always good to connect with somebody who shares the same type and authority because then you could bounce back ideas and uh for me, how it's worked out is uh, when I started at the projector movement before I even started working with Charlie, who is the founder of the projector movement, we met in person and um, he's a Hispanic projector. Mm -hmm. And how that played out is we met up to see if we wanted to uh, become business partners mm -hmm. and he instinctively knew like I want this guy on my team and after that meeting we had lunch and I, w I was talking to my friend and I was just telling her I feel this is what I want to mm -hmm. do like I've been trying to search a a means of living a type of work where like I'm mm -hmm. truly fulfilled and I just heard that I was like Oh, that's my truth right that's there. My voice. Yeah. That that's that's what I need to hear and honor, and that's when I knew that invitation that Charlie had sent out for. He was looking for somebody to join the team, mm -hmm. and me hearing my voice after meeting up with him, I was like, "Yeah, this is this is what I want to mm -hmm. do." So why don't you explain briefly what it means to be self-projectored? Yeah, so the self-projected authority is uh, an authority that only projectors can have. And how that plays out is projectors, um, our strategy is to be recognized and invited. That's how we operate in life. That's how we know uh, where to go in life. Um, so once we are recognized meaning they people see us for who we are and they honor our skills and they invite us um this is mostly for the big invitations in life what you and i share is we have to talk the invitation out with a trusted advisor and it's not necessarily to um get their opinion it's so we could just hear our voice. Yeah, it's the tone of the voice. It's like so important. And I know from my experience too, when I have to talk about something too many times, I also know that it's not the right thing. Mm. You know, because it's almost like you try to 
talk about something in, from so many different angles and you kind of almost want to talk yourself into something right yeah but it's like no actually that's also like you know not the right thing totally and as i was reading more into this authority i was uh reading what Ra said about this authority and Ra is the founder of human design he was saying that uh, we may be surprised as to what comes out of our mouth yeah it's true um, and I, can <laughs> I, I saw it uh, played out uh, this year and and the other way where I knew it was time for me to get out of the situation oh. I was in and how I saw my authority being played out where I knew it was time for me to get out of an invitation uh, it happened this year when I was dating a woman and what ended up happening was I was talking to a friend and I started we started talking about like this woman that I was dating and the words that came out of my mouth, I was surprised by. I was like, I don't think she's the one. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, wow. I didn't even realize that. Huh? Yeah, I was like, I think it's time for me to separate from her. And it wasn't, it wasn't because it was a toxic relationship or anything like that. It was just, that was my truth. And how where design like the mechanics of of how we're operated is we have the g center which is it's where it's our identity it's our truth it's connected to our throat mm -hmm. so whatever we speak whatever we create mm -hmm. comes straight from our truth from who we are yeah. so as self-projected projectors we have to honor that and uh, people who are living in their not self will override that and uh, make decisions from their mind yeah so i thought that that's when i first was surprised by my voice i was like oh there there it is like it's it's time for me to move forward mm. yeah i can relate to that just because when i record podcasts that's what always happens and i keep like re-listening when i edit and i'm like wow i didn't even realize i said that mm. people you know just like share quotes that I mentioned in a podcast and I don't even know. Yeah. Has something big like that happened to you? Or like for me it was like I was dating this woman who I thought I was gonna get in a relationship and then it just I, I was talking to a friend and it just heard my voice. Like I don't think she's the one. And then I mean has anything happened like that? Maybe not relationships but like jobs, home, like a place of living. Definitely um i think even yeah with my last relationship before i finally had the courage to leave i had a lot of conversations with one of my best friends and she always kept telling me like you sound so convinced when you talk about even what happens after you end the relationship like mm. it sounds so like you're free yeah and i'm like yeah well that's kind of true and yeah yeah that was pretty powerful yeah 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 it's uh and we're speaking from our truth yeah. you know um, and I can also sense when it's the truth, it's like such a st strength in my, in my voice all of a sudden. Like that yeah. I usually don't have or didn't have before. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and there was how I learned uh, this formula that we as projectors uh, need to like integrate in order for us to embody our body's intelligence, which it's the strategy and authority yeah. so projectors invited being recognized and then checking in with their authority mm -hmm. how i learned it was by not checking in with my authority so mm -hmm. uh last year i was in a i got into a coaching program and it was a it was a large investment mm -hmm. and i was at a time where i was just down and i'm like i need to figure this out and I was invited to this event and three day event cost thousands of dollars, but I got it for free. Long story short, I get invited to like join the actual program and I let my mind get the best of me. And I'm like, 
oh, you know what, this is what I have to do. Like, if I want to, like, mm -hmm. be a successful coach, uh, a successful entrepreneur. It's like, very not projector like <laughs> Yeah, but for me, two things happened. Uh, I was learning human design. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this is the invitation right yeah. here. Yeah. Let me do this. The other thing that happened was I knew my Saturn's return was about mm -hmm. to happen. Uh, like, the next week. So I was like, oh, this is all aligned. But what I didn't honor was... I didn't talk out the decision with somebody. What I did was I just decided I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. There were so many emotions going through me because it's like, what am I doing? Yeah. But I'm like, nope, I'm just going to like power mm -hmm. through it. And I did, I, I made a decision with my mind, mm -hmm. which is how we're not supposed yeah. to make decisions. And that's an interesting thing. Um, I even have a video on that, like how to work with the strategy, but also the authority because a lot of people that just learn about I'm a projector, right? So whenever, like the minute they see, oh, that's an invitation, they think that's it because it's an invitation. And like my tip for that is to have, literally that's how I started, like have a diary and every single day you, you write down every single invitation. So you train yourself that there are so many invitations. You're not deprived of invitations because that's why you just think, oh, it's an invitation. It has to be the right thing. It's a sign, right? Right, Which right. Is obviously not true. Yeah, and for us, yeah, we could list, there's so many invitations, and what I love about human design, it it empowers us to know that um, if an invitation does come and it doesn't, if we check in with our authority, if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it's not correct for you, that's totally fine mm -hmm. because there's something better out mm -hmm. there for you, and that this is why I love this system. It's like a it's a transformational tool. It's a, I feel it's like one of the best manifestation mm -hmm. technologies we have because a lot of people, especially projectors, we compromise. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, I got this invitation. I don't know when the next one's going to come. Yeah. So human design teaches projectors like, hey, you're being invited. Check in with your authority. If it's not correct for you, that's fine. There's going to be more. Yeah. You just got to... You just got to know how how to work with your authority. And I also think, like, I just, when you were talking about it, I just reflected on both of our um, astrology charts, which, you know, and the correlation to being self-projected, I think, is also, you know, we both have Mars and Gemini, so how mm. we take action is, you know, through Gemini things. But then Mercury, which is, you know, communication, for you it's in Scorpio, right? Yeah. And for me it's in Leo, but it's the eighth house, which is the Scorpio house. So that's the connection of Mercury being connected to our soul, mm. right? And that's the G center, which is actually interesting. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah that, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. Um, how, to where you got to where you are today as an astrologer, did that happen in a human design way where I actually um, found human design first in this lifetime at least <laughs> I keep saying um, and then because I had a lot of resistance towards astrology which is mm. probably also past life related because I just didn't want to have anything to do with astrology I never saw myself as an astrologer I hated horoscopes I was just like yeah that's bullshit it doesn't relate to me at all and so I found human design and then I thought well astrology is a part of it maybe in order to understand the numbers and where they are planets I should look into astrology again and then that's when I discovered like birth charts and everything made so much sense and the system and systems together is just like boom. yeah was, was there like somebody that like invited you to to learn astrology or was it just life calling life. you in yeah. gotcha. I think yeah it was curiosity yeah. More so. I mean, human design, the system probably invited me, if you want to say so, because I, yeah. I just wanted to understand everything. But it's also interesting because there are many elements, you know, I could also have been like, oh, I want to learn more about the chakras now because it's a part of human design or the Kabbalah or the gene keys, right? But I was like so drawn to hum to astrology that, yeah. Yeah. I started with yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I love human design. Yeah. And, you know, that's why I'm like so grateful to be where I'm at today because. Yeah. I get to share what's worked for me to thousands of people, yeah. you know, and, you know, Charlie and I have this vision of just empowering projectors and letting them know that they're unique and 
they're sensitive and it's all mm -hmm. for a purpose. Like yeah. they're beautiful the way they are, and uh, human design just helps us know, recognize who we are, and, and know that whoever we are, however we are, it's, it's perfectly fine and beautiful. Yeah. So as a self-projected projector, how do you um, follow with follow through with your um, strategy and authority every single day? So I was actually talking about this with another self-projector projector because yeah, for us it's like big invitations, but it's not all about the big invitations. Like when we get invited to do, to go out to eat or to hang out with somebody, we could still work with this because big invitations don't happen all the yeah. time. Yeah. So. I was talking to my self-projector projector friend. I was like, how do you make decisions when people are inviting you to like go out to eat? Mm -hmm. Like, do you, cause you can't like talk it out. You know, you I mean, you can, but do you process it in your head? Like as it's happening? And he's like, yeah, I do. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I do as well. Like for the small things, like I know it's kind of, especially uh, from where we're at um, like we it's a more like pure there's a more pure uh, decision because we, we've deconditioned and we're at a place yeah. where like we know who we are so if I know if the invitation is gonna be uh, it's not gonna I'm gonna stay up late and I mean I know I have to do something the next day then I don't have to tell them like Hey, hear me out so I can talk this out. Yes. I'll be I'll just like talk it out internally and make the decision. So that's like an example of how I work with the strategy and authority, like on a more day to day basis. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean sometimes it happens that you have a friend next to you or you live with someone and you can talk about I'm not sure if I wanna go there, you know, whatever. Uh, there's a party here, there's an option here, then you can talk it through. But I mean at the end of the day I feel like, especially if you know yourself and you know your tonality, you kind of like get a feeling for your intuition. Totally. The more you use your strategy and authority. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your experience. Of course. I'm pretty sure it helped a lot of self-projected projectors out there. And um, yeah, definitely keep talking, keep sharing your voice, keep using your voice. And, using your voice. Uh, As self-projected projectors, we love talking. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's do this again. And um, if you guys want to learn more about human design and about being a projector, follow us at theprojectormovement.com. Uh, Bye. Bye. <laughs>